FM. Well, hi everyone. I uh, haven't done one of these for a while, and um, we're going to play a long play game. Um, so uh, this is uh, basically a game which will last about half an hour. Uh, I'm playing a friend of mine, and um, the whole point of this is that I can go a lot deeper into my thought processes uh, about how a Grandmaster thinks and hopefully you can learn from what I'm the process I'm going through this is the kind of process that I expect if you want to become a stronger player yourself that you should go through as well now uh, my opponent is uh, Jax or JT who is uh, um, a friend of mine he works for G Chess but I guess he's about 2100 strength fide and um, the time control is 15 minutes plus 10 seconds move so let's let's just dive into the chess so I've started with d4 uh, and now we have the Queen's Gambit I think I'm I think I'm gonna play c4 other moves I play here the London system I also play the Jabava London system but let, let, let's keep it more traditional today and uh, go go for c4 and JT has now played a traditional opening, the Queen's Gambit. I now need to develop my pieces, so I'm gonna develop, put a little bit of pressure on the pawn here. And now we have A6. That's a crafty little move, this one. There's a Ginger GM course on this um, by Niels Grandilius, who was Magnus Carlsen's second for some of the world championships. And he has done a brilliant video course for Ginger Jim on this move. It's about 10 hours long. You can buy that if you want to learn this opening. And it's a tricky, tricky little move, actually, because a lot of time Black just wants to take here and go B5. We should always be asking ourselves what our opponent wants. Now, there are a couple of methods of meeting this. I have often tried to play it quite sharp, but I haven't had a chance to watch that video course. Uh, and I don't know the theory, so I'm going to try to keep it quite simple. It's a good technique if you get caught out in the opening. Just try to keep things uh, as simple as you can. And that means I want to do something with this pawn or, or not allow my opponent the opportunity to grab it and march forwards. So I'm either going to capture here or another idea which I've seen played is c5. Now, the idea of that is if he goes b6, I can capture. And because the pawn's not on a7 anymore, he can't capture towards the center. But this does come with risks after something like b6 takes, maybe he can get counterplay with c5. Or if I go here, maybe he can break in the center. But this, this looks quite interesting to me. So let me just try this move, which is gonna aim to close down the center. I think it's a bit of a rare move. I'm going for a more closed structure. And I'm trying to stop active pawn breaks as much as I can. Like I say, this one, the, I'm trying to take advantage of my opponent playing this move it doesn't defend b6 anymore I, I would never play such a move if my opponent had a pawn on a7 because b6 takes and then my opponent capturing towards the center would give him this break later on but if he plays this now and he has to take away from the center I quite like my position there it's like an exchange Slav where I have after bishop here two better place better uh, developed pieces and one of the problems that black has with the standard Queen's Gambit is this bishop the light square bishop. This is often a problem piece actually when black plays 1d5 in various uh, different openings because uh, this this piece uh, it can get trapped behind the pawns because they're on light squares so this is another issue that my opponent might have JT. Um, I probably want to continue with standard developing moves move my bishop here get my other knight out and then just develop and then see what happens next. I would love to play a move like b4 at the right time, trying to get a grip over there. Uh, and I, you know, if I can maintain this pawn formation over there. Yeah, this, this is one of the moves I was worried about. Probably a very good move from JT. Uh, and the point being my opponent takes the opportunity to break out as soon as he can. And if I capture this one, things are going to get very mental let's have a look so takes 
Now, if you take Sarah, I can win a pawn. That looks safe. But if I take here, I'm much more concerned about him pushing on. So after takes pushing on, do I have anything there? Well, I do have knight to e4. So we've got to analyze takes, pawn here, knight to e4. But then a move like queen d5 hitting my knight looks very scary. Unless I can find a good move there, I'm, I'm going off this. Knight e4, queen d5. Is there anything there where he's attacking all my pawns? I don't like it. Might be all right for me, but I don't really like it too much. So the other thing I can do is play this where I'm probably not going to have an advantage. But I can just try to keep my pawn formation by supporting this pawn. By playing e3. If I move the... I mean, it's really weird position. I don't know the theory. If I go knight here and he comes forwards, maybe then I can, this is an improved version, because my knight can get out of the way, my bishop can develop. But after knight here takes, queen takes, what's this gonna be like? I'm attacking this pawn uh, on this square, so knight f6. So I'm just trying to calculate, this is a critical stage of the game. Knight here takes, takes, knight here, where he wants to develop the knight and attack my queen. So bishop g5, keeping the pressure on. Knight here. Bishop takes here. Knight takes here. Bishop takes here. Knight c2. It's getting really complicated, isn't it? King here. Knight takes here. Bishop takes here. Bishop takes here. Is his knight trapped? I don't know. It's too complicated. I could be losing that line. And if you don't know the theory then there's no point going for an extremely complex situation where in this time limit, I need more time actually. I know this is a longer time limit, but I can't work out the move. Maybe actually e4 would have been the right way to play that position. Ah, uh, that would have been a much more energetic move. Trying to counter Gambit and had he taken, move my bishop here. Oh uh, yeah, that would have been a much more fun game. Trying to open up the centre, because I do have a little bit more de development with my one extra piece, so I should be happy to open the centre on my own terms. That would have been the way I would have played in future. I didn't actually consider this move e4 at the moment. Okay, the timing is gone. It's always a mistake in competitive chess to think about your previous, uh, previous games, uh, moves even, uh, and to lament them. So now JT is developing very sensibly, putting pressure on the center. And I feel this position should be fine. Now, do I go knight here to finish and, and go for a French defense kind of thing? But then I've, you know, this pawn, it's like a bad French because this pawn normally attacks the center. So e3, I'm going, I mean, maybe now I take on e5 and try to keep it a little, because the problem is if I go knight here, he goes e4, my knight has to move. But then I don't like my pawn being on this square because I want to have my pawn here where I can attack his center. And I can never attack this square. So I don't like this move. So I'm now thinking I need to change things up and, and maybe open it up. And I'm thinking about taking here. The point being, if he goes d4, I can take. And that doesn't look as scary. And if he takes here, maybe I can even grab a pawn. I think I'm going to take here. Because the other, and also the other options I did not like. What else do I play? Knight here, he gets a very comfortable position. How do I get my pieces to any good squares otherwise? If the other options are bad, then, you know, what, what can you do? JT, sensibly developing uh, this one and defending the pawn. And he just wants to take here with a good position. Now, uh, E4, not looking so great because of this move. D4 again. Um, is there any way I can guard this pawn? Well, knight a4 I can play, but then I lose a central pawn. Uh, should I be just developing? And again, I, d I don't like the way I, I, this has gone for me, I have to admit, because uh, he's got better development and maybe a better pawn structure. So, yeah, something's gone wrong. And this f6 move opening things up, I'm not liking. If I go e4 now, he can go d4 which also looks good for him. So this is just a good, sensible move, annoyingly. Uh, okay. Um, what should we do? This bishop doesn't have a good square. So something like knight here takes uh, bishop somewhere. 
try and develop maybe I have to play but I'm really worried this pawn might drop or I might just get hit by a lot of development but I have to develop my pieces so it's uncomfortable position this here let's go back to this one knight takes how, how does that look maybe I should go for this line instead and then I can try to develop Maybe this is a better version because his bishop's so good on this square. I think I'm going to play here just because I don't want his bishop to develop very naturally. I know I give up a central pawn, but I might be losing that pawn anyway. So it's a double pawn. So I'm going to let him take this because I'm kind of, even though that pawn could be weak, it does stop his bishop coming here or here. And now I, I certainly need to develop my pieces now. So knight here, let's simply offer an exchange of knights, but... I need to get it out and I'm just going to concentrate on getting my bishops out and castling now. So I've gone for this line because the other uh, moves I had were looking to my eyes not very nice for me. Uh, had I allowed his bishop to get to, you know, you've got to make your opponent's job in chess as tricky as you damn well can. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do here from an opening which I'm not particularly happy with. Don't really want to, you know. Okay, if I go here, he's going to go knight here. And he's got this annoying move. It's still a bit annoying. Maybe, maybe I do want to take with a pawn. And keep this square for my queen, actually. And then try to castle queenside. Sh should we go for that one? Let's go for this one. The problem, my queen is a bit exposed there because you had this kind of thing. My queen has a very nice central square. And I'm thinking this kind of stuff could, could lead to an interesting position. Now queen d4, supporting my pawn, getting my queen to a nice square. The only thing that would worry me is b6 and c5 ideas, but I don't think that's working. Take c5, my knight covers it. So this is a very nice square for my queen. Let's centralize my queen. And this gives me ideas of maybe getting my bishop on this diagonal somehow like this and I kind of did that for the first time I'm kind of liking my position a bit more now because if black goes king side with his king I attack over there if he goes queen side well I have a pawn or I have you know very far advance to attack him there where am I going to put my king I mean you can't have everything in life can you <laughs> I don't know uh, okay any threats when your opponent place move look at any threats well this knight's a little bit uncomfortable so I feel like b3 and bishop b2 fits in with my plan very well here I'm always watching if this pawn can advance but on pass on c5 I take it still that looks safe so let's continue with b3 just to give my knight a bit more support and give my bishop this diagonal maybe here if I need it so this is this looks like the most active place for my bishop I always try to develop my pieces to the best squares long term that they have moving it to d2 didn't have a lot of long term potential but it did get my piece out a bit quicker but i kind of like the idea of bishop here maybe just rook c1 this c pawn is a key actual f piece in my position i'm not sure if jt's queen d7 really solved his issues and what i mean by that is he really should be aiming to play c5 i don't know if that's possible but if i was black I've been looking at b6 takes and trying to get them to move c5 in. Don't think it works now because I simply, if he goes here, take c5, take. Um, so what's he doing here? I mean, he, maybe he can try to get his bishop to this square. This would be something I'd be thinking of. So if he goes bishop here, bishop b2, the knight can move, I'm trying to move the bishop to contest the diagonal. But if the knight moves here, it's a little bit out of play, and even if he gets his bishop here, my queen can drop back. I'm very safe in that structure. So I'm not too worried about bishop here. I mean, I might have better moves than bishop b2. But let's have a look. Bishop here, rook g1. I'm using my opponent's time to think. Another key, key idea. Uh, then knight here. No point allowing that. So bishop here, I, I just developed. Bishop b2. Let's say his knight goes to the edge of the ball. Quite an interesting idea. I think you should be trying this, this idea. And what would I play then? Uh, do I castle even? Bishop here. And then queen d2. And again, 
the king is a bit exposed on the on the queen side with maybe one bishop here and one bishop here. This seems like a good plan. If I was JT, I'd certainly be trying to think about how where my, where my pieces should be. And moving the bishop to um, f6 strikes me as certainly a, a plan worth worth going for i mean getting his last piece in the game otherwise where where is this bishop going to go i'm just trying to form you know in chess it's always about formulating plans that put you know improve your pieces and put pressure on your opponent's position so this is one such plan this other idea okay so he's, he's going for it yeah okay so i think i have to stop the bishop coming here anyway because he might even be threatening knight e4 pawn takes something like this even though i have e5 there but bishop b2 looks looks correct right there's nothing in this, is there? And then a6. No, sorry, c6. No, that's not not uh, not not really. No, okay. Let's keep it simple. Let's go bishop b2. And now, will he play one of these good knight moves? I think knight here because he defends g7. I know his knight is on the edge of the board, but there's not really, as far as I can see, anywhere I can take advantage of by attacking that knight. I'd love to move my queen to one of these two squares, but is covered by his bishops so I can't do that so knight here I have to think about what I'm going to do because his bishop's coming out it's still okay for me because his knight is stranded there I mean maybe something simple like bishop e2 because the idea behind this is long term to play f4 and attack that knight on the rim we both have a knight on the rim so knight here bishop e2 bishop f6 queen d2 looks okay for me I've got to watch out for d4. I don't really want him playing that move ever. Uh, but I, I'm covering that one with one, two, three, and he's only covering it with one and two. So he, he can't play this breaking move. I mean, after this one, I, I could even just move a rook to the center, you know? I don't know where my rook is best placed. Is it best placed behind my pawn, where I might go c6? Or is it best placed in the center, where it puts a little bit of pressure there and stops any breaks? This c6 move kind of does, a, I do find very attractive actually, if he has to take with a pawn and I can get a knight into c5. That 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 is an attractive idea. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not too worried about my king, I have to say. I'm not too worried because it, it seems safe. This is why I was thinking, uh, this is why I was thinking about when, you know, when, when I'm verbalizing things, when my king is not gonna be safe. And this is why I was a little, keeping an eye on this pawn break. The only way my king is going to become a little bit unsafe uh, in the middle of the board is if he can play d4 and suddenly open up uh, the d file. Okay, so he's got rook here. Now that, to my eyes, seems a little bit slow. Did he really need to play this? What's his idea? It's a purely defensive idea. And this gives me another move now to, to increase some pressure. Now, castling and putting my king on a1 could be one option. But his only way of moving his king is this way now. And I think I'm going to leave my king in the center. And I kind of feel my rook behind the c pawn is where it should be to give me c6. So I'm going to go here. And the main idea of this is to stop any of these b6, c5 breaks, number one. Number two, let's say he castles, I've got c6. He can't take with a queen because of my rook. So c6, he has to take with a pawn. And then I come straight out and take that pawn with check. My other idea is c6 becomes an idea he always has to consider because he has to take with a pawn. And I might better play it like a positional pawn sacrifice with my knight coming to this fantastic outpost. That looks like a very good positional sacrifice, but I can wait. He can't play c6 because I've got the b6 square. So this move makes JT think. Um, he's got to always consider and look out for me playing c6. Uh, and the threat, as Nimzovic said, is stronger than the execution. I mean, I'm always going to have a look to see if this is okay, but I'm probably going to wait for it and just try to bring my last piece out, my bishop, maybe get my rook to this open file. I think actually castling kingside and put my king in the corner, very valid if I feel I need to, but I don't think I'm gonna rush this c6 move because what I'm now thinking about is if he's not if he's not gonna play this knight move here, maybe if he plays his knight move, then I do c6 because he's moved his pieces away from the center, so I come back towards the center. But 
the because he's played rook g8, it strikes me that he hasn't seen knight h5. And for my eyes, if he hasn't seen knight h5, what can he do here? So I'm not really even thinking about my own moves, but I'm thinking about what can JT do to improve his position. He can't do anything with the rook. The only idea is knight h5, but let's hope he, ha he can't see that. And if he does, I'm okay anyway. So we discount these two. His bishop there can't do anything. It's passive. His bishop on e7 is passive. It's not doing anything. His queen has nowhere good to go to. This pawn is purely defensive. He can't castle queenside because of c6, meaning he can't get his rook in. He has no pawn breaks. This one I take on pass on. So that's another one he can't move. And he can't, to my eyes, move any of his pieces. So he has moved his queen. Uh, and I said he can't move his queen, but he has found somewhere to move his queen. And the only thing I can think here, maybe actually a very clever idea, we've got to think why has he done that move? And it's clearly to vacate this square. What does he want to vacate it with? The knight. This is a very nice idea, actually, because the knight increases the pressure on the pawn and it goes back to this idea of bishop to f6. So this is this is certainly the move to watch out for. Now, is there any way I can take advantage of the queen being here? Well, if he castles, check. Takes, takes, and my rook releases. But castles, check. Maybe he just moves his king. Is my knight really doing anything? Um, but first of all, let's see if we can stop this knight d7. If we stop that, we're okay. So what about rook g1? Knight d7, rook takes g7. He seems to get quite a lot of play there. I don't really like that if he castles queenside. All his pieces suddenly jump, jump in my face. So I don't really like that. Okay, now this is, this is not any good, is it here? Takes, takes, queen d7, nope. So the good, very good move from JT. Very nice move that I've certainly underestimated here. Um, this is something I've got to try and deal with. Now, should I be putting Bishop on G two? Is that is that is that the right idea to attack indirectly that pawn? Uh, this one is always a move that's shouting to me, but it doesn't get anywhere. It just takes, takes, and it goes Queen D six and. There's no follow-up. Um, yeah, so this is this is actually... I missed this move. I mean, maybe I should just grab this pawn, but I'm getting a bit scared there after castles. Yeah, I don't like it. He's got too much activity in, in, in this position. So what do we do? What do we do here? Um, do we go for bishop g2, strike this way? That's the only thing I can see. Now, as bishop comes here... My queen moves, and I'm pinning that pin down, that pawn down. But if I go here straight away, the knight comes into e4, and that is a really good square for the knight. So do I play bishop g2 here, waiting for that knight's move, and then f4? Let's have a look. Bishop here, queen to d7. So the best I can see, I've got to develop this bishop. This doesn't look like my ideal square, because it's in the way of the pawn. But I'm really thinking about how to meet knight d7. And the idea is I'm going to push my f pawn and I'm pinning this pawn down. So we could have a sequence knight back, pawn here, bishop here, queen moves, bishop takes bishop, queen takes. And that pawn there is pinned. So this is why I'm doing it this way around. I didn't want his knight coming into e4. This is why I put the bishop here first. And also when I castle kingside, which looks now like the natural place of my king, it's going to be safer because I have a bishop defending it. So this is going along the sequence I had envisioned. Um, and actually, my exchange of dark squares might might be quite useful for me because my queen can come back into the central square. And I think I found the right squares for my pieces. This is the important thing in the early middle game stage. The early middle game stage is finding the correct, the correct squares for your pieces. If you put your pieces on the right squares with the right intentions, you're probably going to win the game, <laughs> it, you know, because when the tactics start to happen, you're going to be in a much better situation than your opponent. Obviously, you have to be good at calculating tactics. You can't be a great chess player without this uh, side to your game. This is just a, a, a must, basically. Um, but I'm liking my position now because, again, he can't move this pawn. I take on pass on. 
Uh, if he castles queenside, well, it looks quite risky. Is his king really safer over there when it's in the line of the rook? There might be tactics with this one. Okay, so he has. Fair enough. Now, this check. Let's have a look. Now, I don't... I'm not going to play that because of king b8. I don't want to get involved in too many tactics because if I take his bishop... I think he'll take with a g pawn opening up the rook so i don't actually want to take his bishop i want him to take me i can't see what his next move is i'll maybe g5 if i castle uh, that looks a little bit scary actually that would be okay but then f5 takes takes here it's not really anything for me okay let's have a look at this check again this is takes takes Knight here, no, that don't, don't, doesn't work. If I take here, he takes with this pawn. Maybe I do that now while I haven't committed my king. So I can put my bishop here. And I want to get a hold with my queen here and not commit my king. Maybe I my king come this way. So I'm going to take here. Then the knight comes in. I don't really want to allow his knight to come into the center without... No, I don't like that either, so tough game this tough game castles g5 scares me because i don't want to open up his rook i will have to play here bishop takes let's calculate this bishop takes here and the move that scares me most there is something with his knight like knight f8 so if i take the queen he takes my queen now what about some move like h5 to stop this g5 idea h4 it, it doesn't look correct to me because if i castle my pawn is very weak over there uh, okay so castles here 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 and the ending uh, there's some problems with my piece here being in, in his line of his rooks i don't like that either okay tough uh this g5 move is really annoying actually and i don't want to open up his rook that looks suicidal to me so i have to go here takes takes then like knight f8 is the move i'm scared of takes and his rook takes here uh, oh no because his bishop's going to be on pre so okay i'm going to castle and with the idea here i'm going to go f5 keep the g file closed if he captures i'm going to go bishop take because i've seen there might be a tactical chance for me. Oh, he goes bishop takes here first, though. Knight takes, and then knight here. Bishop takes here. Rook takes here. And I'm losing a piece, actually, there. Fuck. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. G5, I'm in trouble. I, I panicked a bit with my time. Okay, I'm happy he's done that, first of all. But now, if I take with the queen, G5 is still coming. And still scary. Now, what else do I do though? If I take the knight, I'm not worried about this one, but if I take with the knight, g5 here takes. Maybe I have to go for the ending. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I, I actually want to bring my knight back to the center. Only It was only had tricks of a check here, not doing much. So in the long run, my knight wants to come back. Okay, now this move is the scary move, definitely. He hasn't played it yet, but he wants to come here. Okay, let's centralize my queen. This clearly the best square for my queen. Uh, and he was going to come in and attack my queen anyway. Now, if he comes in here, which he probably will do, I'm still worried about g5. But maybe I can play f3 and just shoot that one back. He can't go g5 now because I take his knight. So I'm trying to improve my pieces, stop him doing his normal moves. And I can improve my pieces by centralizing my knight. I can even maybe bring my knight to attack his queen. If his queen moves, I have to move c6 with a ferocious attack. So I'm going to play f3. And the reason for this is I think I force his knight to come back. Now, does g5 work here? Takes, takes. Uh, queen here. He takes with a bit of play here. Shouldn't be enough for him. Okay, so now he's come back. I now centralize my knight. And again, g5, I take his knight. But I've got a big threat. The knight moving the queen, followed by c6. And I have a big attack. So he's gone this way. But now I can come the other way of my knight. And this move, c6, is looking very scary. It's funny how quickly this has turned. In actual fact, his queen 
is now very misplaced. Maybe I shoo it a little bit further away. Am I worried about it coming here? No, because rook f2 wins the queen. So let's just push it to an even what I consider worse square. It's further away. It means that it can't, it's less centralized. So I'm just going to improve before I break him open with c6. And all of a sudden, the position is crumbling for jt. Uh, queen here, I think just rook f2 is uh, horrendous. His queen is trapped. My queen is so strong in this central square. JT missed this idea of g5 earlier, which he played an excellent game. Maybe just missing this one move. Now, it must be c6. Let's not think about such a move. He can't take it because my knight comes in um, with the knight coming to uh, c6. Uh, so he, he, he has to move his knight, but now his king it is starting to to get opened up and I've even got Rook here winning the Queen might be the killer move this to me looks good his Queen has been sidetracked to a bad area of the game and it's funny how this this just completely crumbled for JT I think he played very well his Queen c6 was good and in the end it was only a 25 move victory but that clearly does doesn't show uh, doesn't give it justice I mean, very interesting game, very interesting opening, I, I think. Um, I think for me, I've made some... I've ma I would play e4 in future here. I'd have to have a look at this, uh, I mean, uh, as well. Um, and e3, not sure about this move, very natural. And now I think this is a very clever move, because otherwise I feel I'm worse. And... JT plays another good move and now I, I think I've made another good move because this pawn was actually key to my position but as we're going to see a bit later on we got this very interesting idea I don't even know if the knight should be coming here actually I don't know about this maybe maybe JT should be attempting to get the bishop to this diagonal maybe with g6 or, or potentially this and the knight coming to e7 that looks very harmonious let's go bishop e7 bishop f6 and the knight travels to c6. I like that because then d4. This could be a very key break. Uh, and as we go on, well, uh, some key moves from me. I think, again, this is very important. I was forced to play good moves. Any other move, I, I could be in, in trouble because f4, the knight comes into this square. And uh, after this, well, I think JT has to play g5. Uh, and... I was wondering here that had JT played G5, well, I have to play F5, but it, I don't know if I'm better there any at all. Tough game. Uh, do remember to like and subscribe, everyone. Thank you for watching this video. Unlucky JT. Uh, it, w it was a good fight. Until next time, I really hope you enjoy these long play games. Uh, let's try to help me get to 100,000 subscribers. That's all I want. I want that badge. Uh, I want to do things my own way on YouTube. I don't want to come too commercial and start pumping out a load of rubbish. I just want to do what I want to do and get to 100,000 subscribers if I can. If I don't, I don't care that much. Not the end of the world, is it? Uh, it's all a lot of fun. Cheers. Goodbye.